Coleman and Joe Coleman, everybody. Uh, sorry for the slight delay there. Um, I'm kind of a fucking dumbass and was trying to improve the stream by changing some shit and ended up accidentally deleting literally fucking everything. Uh, so I had to rebuild everything from scratch. I was fucking around with the settings. So uh, if this looks weird or sounds fucking weird, let me know. Let me know what's different. I will try to undo the dumbassery that I fucking did. Anyways, um, so yeah, we're gonna finish off that league we started last night, get our last game in, and then just do some more combo bullshit here. Um, maybe play some more Bomberman leagues, maybe do some Pioneer for the, uh, Mana Trader series, whatever. But we'll have some fun, it's gonna be a kind of whatever stream today. I don't really have a time limit either, so we can go as long or as short as we want today. Before we get started, if you haven't already, follow me on all the social media there. Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, all that, to see the dumb shit that I'm up to, all the dorky puppy pictures, and know when I'm streaming. YouTube for this and any other streams on the replay. Check them out. Tell me I punted. Tell me anything I can do to get better or anything that you liked. And then uh, go ahead and hit me up on the Discord if you want to shoot me deck list or anything like that. Uh, on that note, let's finish off this league. Um, we finished off 2-2 two and two last night, so this one's going to be for all the marbles right off the bat. So uh, we'll, we'll see what goes on here. I'm trying to take advantage of uh, having the day off to get some more practice in. I was supposed to be practicing in person today, but uh, my buddy ended up having to bail. So um, I did get some uh, some critiques from some buddies on some of my play last night. A few things I will fully admit I got way too cocky in that eight cast matchup, but uh, I also completely forget that I have Garuda like half of the fucking time. So I always forget to put it in my hand if I have fucking nothing better to do. Are we gonna win the die roll? Yes. All right, show off the Doom Kraken. <sighs> okay, what the? Okay, Cyborg can get out of my face. Um. So, I mean, we've got Urza Saga, and we can find combo pieces pretty quick, but we aren't actually doing anything to stop our opponent, and EE could be good depending on what they're on. But in the blind, I mean, we can pedal Saga, turn one Azorius Signet, and not really have much else going on. Um, like I said, depending on the matchup, an EE on one could be devastating, but I think we're going to ship this one. Um, it's a little slow, but I like it better than the last one. Um... So, I mean, not knowing what our opponent's up against, there's something to be said. Like, I would like another land or another fucking something to do, because I can't actually cast anything turn one unless I put this chalice on zero, which if they're on eight cast, that actually does a decent amount. But at the same time, like, is it really worth it? I'm up to three mana, I can reality chip. Um, I mean, I also gotta put something to the bottom if I keep this one. I feel like if I'm going to put anything to the bottom here, it's probably going to be the reality chip. I might just put the fucking Chalice of the Void to the bottom and hope I draw something. Problem is, is if I don't, then I have literally fucking nothing going on here. Um, fuck, I got a mulligan. There, there's no guarantee I'm going to hit my mana. Oh, Jesus fucking Christ. Okay, well, we're keeping this because we don't have a fucking choice otherwise. Um, Tomb to the bottom. Caracas to the bottom. I mean, fuck it, we're leaning on this guy. Shit, this is not the start I wanted, but... Hopefully Chalice on one does something. Well, it stops whatever they're doing right now, so that helps. Um, I mean, fuck, we're all in on this. We are all in on the patchwork beatdowns, apparently. <laughs> Shit. All right. Lands, maybe? Wait, that's all I can think of based off of these. 
Oh, in oh fuck, Enchantress. Okay, this is not the start I wanted with for fucking Enchantress. Well, the nice part is, is I can do this and I can start growing shit. Um, so I actually can go. Well, no, I can't. I still need mana to actually cast Garuda. Is what I can do. Triple blue. But I need nine mana total, so I've got three, six. I can't actually do anything yet. I need another three mana before I can actually do anything with Garuda. I could put it in my hand and hope for the best, but then I'm even further away. I'm still fucking three mana off from being able to do anything with that. So I don't think I want to get Garuda right off the bat yet. This is a very unfortunate mold of four. Fortunately, they're probably going to be able to get all of their fucking Enchantress effects online now. A green... Is this a fucking main deck collector oof? No, Destiny Spinner. Okay. So I need something good off the top here. See that the Synod is a land... So I'm at three, six, seven. I still need two more mana before I can even do anything with Garuda. Uh, it might be worth it just to pop it now so I get it in my hand. Um, we'll, we'll swing in for now. This is not where we fucking want to be at all. That was shitty as hell. We had the mulligan so far. Probably should have kept the first hand, but... Yeah, we're just going to get Garuda. If we hit a soul land, we can cast it. Luckily, this is shutting off some of their shit. However, they could just still cantrip. It's going to keep the enchantments off the battlefield, but they can still just use it to cantrip if they don't care about it going to the graveyard. Yeah, they're using it just to cantrip at this point. Cantrip and gain them some life. Oh, can't be ca God damn it. Fucking Destiny Spinner. I forgot about that stupid fucking line of text on this thing. Well, this is not how this is going to want to fucking go. Um, if I can find an EE, -E, e -E on two does a bunch, but this is fucking annoying. I gotta find a way to deal with this Destiny Spinner. Seal of Fire. Okay. This is really fucking annoying. That was really, really fucking painful, Molly, getting that far. Ugh. What a way to fucking go. God, already fucking starting with a mold of four and then fucking getting just waffle stomped. They're just gonna keep fucking going at this point. Fuck. Oh god. Well, at least we know what they're on, so when we sideboard, uh, we're bringing in Engineered Explosives. Uh, we're gonna bring in Ether Sworn Cannonist. Yep, yep, yep. Do your thing. Swack me. Swack me for a few. That's fine. Azorius Signet that doesn't really fucking do anything this turn. Um, I mean, we're, we're probably just fucking dead here. But we're going to cast this because we can get Ruta next turn with it. Which is... Actually, we still can't even get Ruta next turn. <laughs> oh, fucking A. Even with the London Mulligan, sometimes you mulligan into Oblivion and have non-games. <laughs> what are you doing at instant speed? <laughs> As a fucking besage you, really? God damn. Okay. Well, now we're even further off from our fucking Garuda, so that's fun. I 
the problem is, is there's literally nothing we can do. They're just gonna fucking pop off here now. Like, there's literally nothing we can do. So, back to looking at our sideboard. So, yeah, we're bringing in Sworn Cannoness. We're gonna bring in Engineered Explosives. We're just gonna let them fucking play with themselves a little bit. Sit here while they jack off. Um... Hmm. That's really all we got against them, to be completely honest. Luckily, yeah, I think that's really all we got. Oh, and they're like, uh, I guess I could have popped the Tormod's Crypt, but whatever. So they're not a traditional Enchantress deck by the look of it. Alright, so if he... Okay... It doesn't have the mana to target my dude, though. Interesting. Because he's only got one mana. He can target my automaton if he wants, but... Interesting. So apparently our opponent... <laughs> and they had the other fucking land. Oh, man, they must be pissed. All right, so now that they're going to live from the loam, we're actually going to fucking pitch this shit. So on the plus side, they have... I mean, granted, Destiny Spinner is a fucking win con, but... So we're kind of just seeing what they're doing. This is a very weird version of Enchantress. I am not used to seeing shit like this at all. Jesus Christ. Our opponent's just popping off over here. Did, did, did you fuck up again, opponent? Okay, so it's this version of Enchantress. We're just gonna fucking scoop here. I don't feel like fucking sitting around. We mold to Oblivion, and that's honestly what fucking lost us this game. So, uh, Ether Sworn Cannonist is coming in. Where the fuck is it? Engineer Explosives are coming in. Reality Chip, we don't really need. Um, Tormod's Crypt is a little bit. I feel like this is another one. We're either going to be prison or we're going to combo off on them. So that, that was just unfortunate game one. Hopefully we can undo that. That was just super, super unfortunate game one. Oh well. On to the next one. Oh boy. Uh, yep, show the doom cracking. Um. So we have a turn three Urza or a turn three Oriox Salvagers, and nothing else to do with it. I think we're gonna mulligan in those. These fucking hands. Oh my god. All right, we're keeping this. Ballista can go away. And then we'll get rid of one of the ancient tombs. Be done. Wow, what a way to fucking end this league. Just fucking mulligating into oblivion. And we at least got some form of hate here, so we can slow him the fuck down a little bit, but... Okay, I don't really care about the Caracas. EE on one is actually kind of interesting here. But we're going to go ahead and start off with doing this. EE on two shuts off all of their fucking uh, Enchantresses, though. Unfortunately, it kills our Ether Sworn Cannonist as well, but. Well, if that's how today is going to fucking go, this might be a short stream. <sighs> For fuck's sake. All right. We're just gonna fucking run shit out. Wow. All right. Yeah, 
up, yep, 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 yep. Well, on the plus side, if we get a colored source of mana, we're fucking popping this bitch on two, and I don't give a shit. Fortunately, this helps them find more shit to do, but... Oh, we don't even get a cut. Yeah, fuck it. We're, we're, we're fucking done here. All right. We're, we're not sitting through them jacking off for that long. Well, we'll, we'll take our loss and we'll, we'll try again. Starting off the league mulligan into oblivion is, uh, kind of rough, but it is what it is. We will just start a new league and try again. That, that was unfortunate is one way to put it, but. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, fucking only getting into oblivion, cause why the fuck not? Do, 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 do. So how's everyone doing today? Hopefully everyone all enjoying a good Friday. I'm still not used to this whole actually having holidays off thing. Went fucking almost nine years without them. So definitely, definitely not used to this shit. All right, what do we have here? So, we've got a turn one chalice on one. I think I like this. I think we're going to keep it. So, we can turn one chalice on one. Play a Tormod's Crypt to shut off their fucking graveyard. And then, unfortunately, it does put us a little ways away from this Oriox Salvagers, or Urza for that matter, but I think we want to fucking get our lock pieces down. I'll play this as well, just in case they're like some kind of reanimator deck or something. Set up our defenses. So like the best thing we could get off the top would be, okay, so that actually does literal nothing for us here. Um, I want to play the Cavern of Souls, but I want to wait until we have another mana source so we can actually cast something here. So I think we're just going to pass the turn. Alright, so something green bait. This isn't the same guy we were just playing it. Is this the same motherfucker we were just playing against? Like, is this seriously the same fucking dude? Like, I really think this is... Tell me, chat, is this the same person we literally just fucking played against? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever. Okay, so there's not the type of mana source that I need right now. Um, fuck. No, no, I didn't fucking click that. Fuck off. Uh, fucking goddamn it. Okay, we're gonna play an Urza Saga. Yep, we're gonna lose that. That's fine. There's nothing else we can fucking do anyways, so we're just gonna let it go. I swear to god, this is the same dude we literally just played against. What is he gonna do? Grab a fucking Sethus? No, he's grabbing a fucking Argothian Enchantress. I 
I mean, there's still a very slim possibility that we can get out from under this, but the chances of it are slim to none. So we still got four mana open. Or no, three mana. Another exploration. Play another land drop, get another thing under fucking Valica. <laughs> well, not only do we mulligan into fucking Oblivion, we play the same motherfucker two games in a row in two different fucking leagues somehow. No, oh, whatever. Fuck it. We're 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 not dealing with this. We're he's already fucking set up. We're just gonna fucking go to the next one. I seriously cannot fucking believe we're up against the same fucking guy. I mean, we're basically just gonna fucking do the same thing we did last time. Like, we're just gonna hope he doesn't have turn zero fucking force of vigor again. <sighs> Jesus fucking Christ. <sighs> I guess it's my turn to be salty today. <laughs> I mean, granted, it does kind of... It kind of honestly does look like uh, fucking Enchantress is just a very bad matchup for us because we don't really have any hate for enchantments. And then their fucking, whatchamacallit, basically just shits on us. Fucking Destiny Spinner. Um... I mean, I think we keep this. We can fucking EE on two relatively quickly. And we can ramp into an early Karn. So, yeah, I think we just keep this, honestly. Um, let's go ahead and play Cavern. Cavern on oops, Human. Play a Lotus Petal. Um... Yeah, we're just going to play this now. Heal through the turn. Alright, he's going to get to Abundant Growth. Draw a card. Yep, 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 yep. Yep, 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 yep. Crocus ain't bad. Crocus ain't bad at all. I'm just going to play the Crocus and pass, I think. There's something to be said about throwing EE out, but he's probably got a fucking Force of Vigor in his hand. Curious if he's mana screwed. Okay, so apparently he's just fucking mana screwed. So that's actually helping us out immensely. Uh, we're going to go ahead and play that. We're going to run out of Karn. Um, so we're basically just going to try to go for the kill. There is a possibility he has a Besaju, and he kind of just fucking blows us out here. Uh, but he needs two mana for it still, so we're going to go ahead and grab the Lion's Eye Diamond, but not fucking play it. Because if we put it out, it's open to getting killed. If we wait and... Okay, so he does have two mana now, so he theoretically has... Okay, maybe he doesn't? Destiny Spinner. Okay... So now we have a number of things we can do here. So. The question becomes, how do we want to do this? Because I kind of want to just fucking put EE -E on two and pop it. Hmm. 
We do have a backup Karn, so if he kills the Karn, it's not the end of the world. So I think what I want to do is actually put EE on 2, pop it, and then set up to go off with Karn next turn. Thank you, uh, Romario Vidal. Thank you for uh, following. Hopefully you're having fun. Um, so yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to put EE on 2. Kill their des like try to kill their destiny spinner when they just fucking go for it. Uh, we'll put Urza Saga out. Um, is there something in our sideboard we could grab? You know what? Hmm. There's something to be said also about possibly just grabbing our big dumb beater here. So we could go for that line. We could grab Sorcerer Spyglass to shut down the Destiny Spinner. So then he's taxed as far as what he wants to actually... Yeah, I think it might be worth doing that. I think we're going to down tick... Well, no, because then we can't pop EE on two. Well, if we play Pedal, we can. So I actually think we're going to do that. Yeah. We're going to cast the Pedal. We're going to down tick... Go grab Spyglass, just so we can see what the fuck is going on over there. And then we're going to go ahead and cast the Spyglass. Okay, so what the fuck is this shit? Is that one target artifact or creature until it leaves, or Gothian Enchantress? Okay, so he doesn't have a Viseju. Which is good to know. So unless he top decks a Beseju, we should be able to just wreck him. Okay. So we're going to just name Destiny Spinner. Just so he can't make shit. Destiny Spinner. Okay, so now he can't turn his lands into anything. We still have the mana up to pop to blow that up. And then we just go for the lock next turn, basically. Or at least we go to set up for the lock next turn. Okay, so he's going after Karn. Yeah, I suppose. I don't know. I'm still I'm still not used to these fucking Karn boards. Like, I'm used to playing Infect and shit. I'm not used to playing Karn board style things, so I'm always torn what to grab. I was thinking go for the hard lock here, but, uh, so let's see. How much mana do we have? We do this. We play him. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine. So I need one more mana to be able to do everything I want to next turn. Yeah, that is true. Well, we'll see what we draw here. We got a walking ballista. Um... So we're going to Karn. Actually, no. Leave that up. Make some mana. We're going to play another Karn. So we've got five mana. Can't do anything with Destiny Spinner. We can pop this. So I think we just go for the lock next time, right? So we basically grab... Yeah, we'll just grab Liquid Metal Coating now, and then we'll just play it next turn, so that we can start fucking with him. So, where are you? Liquid Metal Coating, and then we'll pass the turn, because we can pop EE Liquid Metal Coating, blow up their land next turn. So yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll do what you're saying there, Romar. Okay, so he's making me pop this now, which is fine. Because he can't go after the Karn anyways. So we finally hit a third land. Let's see, Touch of the Spirit Realm's gone. He's still got all this shit in his hand. So I'm guessing he's trying to set up so he can do something else here. I mean, the other thing is, is we could just fucking go for the full lock next turn. 
assuming that he doesn't play a creature here that can attack into the Karn. This is only a creature, right? Yeah, exile target creature and opponent controls. So is he just going to play Valka Exploration and go from there? Or is he actually going to play an Enchantress? Okay, so he's going to play Cephas. Is he just doing this for the sake of drawing a card? Okay, so we just win here, right? Like, I'm 99% sure we just fucking win here. Because he's got no mana open to be able to do anything with. We're going to be able to grab a Lion's Eye Diamond, play a Lion's Eye Diamond, bounce, set this back to his hand, and fucking... Uh, Microsoft Flat is locking. So this should be game. Unless I'm missing something. Opponent's in the tank for some fucking reason. Yeah, so we're gonna grab another Lion's Eye Diamond. We'll play our Lion's Eye Diamond. We'll be able to grab Microsynth Lattice. We have plenty of mana to do all this, so this is game. Because they're not in blue, they can't force a will this, they don't have the mana to besage you it in response, and once it resolves, everything's fucking colorless, so you can't even pitch a force to it. So I think we got this one. Assuming our opponent ever lets us resolve this. <laughs> Anybody, anybody at all, come on. Well, apparently our opponent's uh, contemplating their life choices. I also always forget with the liquid metal coating, I can actually still activate it to shut something off without actually killing it. I always think, like, I want to be able to play liquid metal coating and uptick Karn instead of just thinking... Like, play Liquid Metal Coating on their upkeep, activate it, restrict them off of something. Is our opponent mad? Did they, they didn't disconnect. I don't know what the fuck our opponent's doing here. I really gotta trim my beard, I'm getting fucking hairs in my mouth now. Um... So, I ran into this problem one other time. So, like, our opponent was just basically doing this and tanking like a motherfucker. Um, and it went well past the five minutes that you normally get a fucking timeout for. Did they get rid of that timeout thing in league matches? Is that only in a free rooms thing where you can get a match loss for inactivity? Because I swear to God, I was playing against some dude, and he went well past the five minutes that it normally kicks you out of a match for when I'm playing over at the practice rooms. So... Kind of curious if they got rid of the timeout feature. They were ahead of us on time for a little while, but now they're just fucking tanking. I mean, granted, luckily they don't win that fucking fast. So if they just want to sit here and time out and try to go to a game three, I feel like we have a halfway decent shot of being able to just win via timeout. It's not the win I like, but I'll fucking take it. A win's a win. <laughs> So how's everybody doing today? Welcome to the stream, welcome to the salt mines. If you missed the uh, first match, I'm 99% sure we played against the same guy as our final match of a league I was finishing up from last night. So start off a little salty, but uh, yeah, I'm definitely going to have to go back and rewatch this and see if this is literally the exact same guy or not. I'd be very interested to see if it actually paired us against the exact same player, because this is the exact same deck we just played against. 
I'd be very surprised if there's two people both playing this weird version of Enchantress. Unless this is just what Enchantress is now. Um, I mean, maybe it is. I don't fucking know. I got a buddy who plays Enchantress, but his version is not at all like this, so... Apologize to everybody else who's just sitting here like, fuck, I mean... Sorry our opponent is not giving us very entertaining gameplay today. <sighs> so what's everybody doing today? What's everybody's plans? Hopefully you have some fun shit planned. Might go hit one of the local breweries tonight. Fucking Crow Strain started releasing uh, Nilla Nectar again, which is... If you've watched me before, you know it's my favorite beer, so I'm going to go and probably drop way more money buying more of it than I should, but... I like to stock up on it when it actually gets released. It only happens like two to three times a year, so... Go do that. Maybe work a little bit. Got to do some grinding on some gun parts to modify them. Um, clean up around the house. Possibly, possibly start planning for a new kitten. We, we, we might end up getting another cat. So currently we have one cat and one dog. And Nahiri's our mascot, which she's sleeping back there over by the fucking fish tank. So for, uh, any of you who watched the stream, you've, you've seen her before. Um, but you haven't, you've maybe seen our cat Cosmo. Um, but the wife wants another cat, so we're thinking about maybe getting another one. But we need to make sure that we have a spot for it to be able to play with toys and shit, because Nahiri will just try to eat all the cat toys like she did before. So, moved to Baby Gate in front of our gym and kind of turned that into a gym slash cat toy room. So, we're giving that a little bit of a trial go and. See how it goes. Possibly get another kitten. Um, we lost our older cat late last year, uh, Two Face. Fortunately, got cancer. So once we got over our grieving period, there the wife has really been wanting something else small and fuzzy. Luckily, she has animal fever and not baby fever. So <laughs> I'll take it. But she's been sending me fucking pictures from the Humane Society all day. I'm like, oh, check out this kitten. Check out this one. I'm like, God damn it. I literally just said that maybe we can get one, and she's already just taking it and running with it. So that's always fun. Might have some more dumb animal pictures for you guys if we do end up going with one. Increase our zoo a little bit again. So, yeah. Always fun times in the uh, Ehrlich household there. All sorts of fucking animals. And for those of you who don't know and haven't seen the pictures there, we, we do have a lot of animals in general. We got the two that I just talked about. I've got a the 25-gallon fish tank you see behind me. Um, I'm in the process of building a 180-gallon tank in our basement. Um, it's going to be built into a wall and shit. Me and my buddy... Oh, hey, our opponent's finally back here. Uh, me and my buddy ended up actually uh, building the wall to put it in. Okay, so let's see here. We want to tap our mana. We are going to bounce set this. Make sure I don't fuck this up. Um, okay, so we've got all the mana in the world. We're going to play this just to be safe. We're basically just going to run our hand out here. Just so that we're not losing any value to cracking these Lion's Eye Diamonds. Is our opponent back to wanting to time out? <laughs> they did just waste five fucking minutes there. So, play the land. Um, do, do, do. Play this. This way we don't lose anything when we fucking crack these. It's a little wind more fucking dumping our hand like this, but... Kind of curious what our opponent decided to do there. <laughs> If I could walk away for five plus minutes. <sighs> All right. Crack for white. Crack for white. 
Then we got Microsoft Lattice. Where are you? Play Microsoft Lattice. Win the game. Okay, we got there. We got there. All right. So we just need to do that again. <laughs> oh, fuck. Okay, um, do, do, do. Well, I mean, I guess we kind of just run it back. So, but yeah, um, so, yeah, we got all sorts of fucking pets. Follow me on all the, like, Instagram and Facebook and all that shit, and you'll see pictures of all of them. Super excited to get this fucking fish tank up and running. Um, my buddy's actually coming over on Sunday to help me do some more on it. We got the first batch of mudding and taping up, so we gotta mud it and sand it again, and then I gotta clean and seal the floors. It's turning into a project, but... It's actually been kind of fun doing all that kind of shit. I enjoy building things. Can't wait to actually have it set up and actually get to do all the plumbing myself. Um, do to do. Let's see. So we've got an EE we can put on two. We've got double Caracas. Um, problem is, is we really don't have shit else to do. We're relying hard on an EE to shut them off of anything. Which we've already seen isn't the greatest fucking plan in the world. Um, I think we're going to pitch this. Okay, this... It's a little slower than I would like it to be. But I feel like we can at least do something with it. Um, I also don't want to mulligan into oblivion again. Problem is, is we already saw Chalice on one really doesn't do much. Eh, I think we got a mulligan again. I mean, I guess we're keeping this. Uh, put the re. Maybe we'll put the ballista and the Tormod's crypt to the bottom. Hope that we can Chalice on one and then Chalice on two. Because Chalice on two at least does something. Unfortunately, they're already starting their fucking shenanigans. We also can theoretically ramp into an early Karn. Um, we could also EE on one. Or we could EE on two and then hopefully pop it next turn to get rid of whatever dumb shit they're doing. I, I don't know. Um... And this does not seem like a very good matchup for us here. Alright, we'll throw that on human. Um, is they're probably going to play a Destiny Spinner next turn. So I think I want to wait. I could pedal Lotus on one, but they're just going to play the Destiny Spinner and be able to play their shit through it anyways. So I think we're better off getting to Chalice on or EE on two, pop it, blow their shit up, chalice on, yeah, chalice on two? But I don't know, we'll see. Okay. Seal of fire, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fine. Luckily, they don't have a ton going on right now. The shroud is a little annoying, but... So we're gonna go ahead and do this. We're going to Chalice on one for now. Hope we draw another colored source, or just another mana source in general, so that I can play EE on two and pop it in the same turn. Is kind of what we're hoping for here. So here's a Destiny Spinner, I'm sure. Okay, no, he's going after the Chalice on one. That's interesting. And he's got Wasteland! What in the fuck is going on over here? Wow, that's aggressive. Okay, um... I mean, yeah. It comes back as a chalice on zero, which is annoying as fuck. Um, Okie dokie then. 
that's that's a thing. Uh huh. So we can chalice on one to try to shut them off from doing anything. We can E on zero. I'm popping next turn to get rid of the chalice on one. That's or the chalice on zero. That's now fucking us over. Um. No, we're gonna chalice on one. Well, that was that was that was something, to say the least. That was also a very, very aggressive start from our opponent there. Okay, so now he's just casting these to try to cantrip. Because he's trying to find something to do. We got an automaton, so that actually sorta kinda helps us. So, like I said, the other thing we could do here is we could EE on zero to blow this fucking thing up. Which actually is probably the play. So, as weird as this fucking looks, we're gonna do this so we can... Unfortunately, it's gonna blow up our other chalice, too. But I think we need to to start being able to play our fucking zero drops. Either that or we just leave it up as an option to do something with. So he's just trying to cycle through his deck to find something at this point. Okay, so he found his... He found a Sith, though, so he found another fucking, whatchamacallit, Enchantress effect. So now he's just cycling through his deck looking for something to do. Like, as much as this sucks, we gotta pop it. We're blowing all of our shit, which sucks ass, but... We gotta be able to start doing something here. That might have been a mistake, but whatever. I don't think we were getting out of it anyways. They went aggressively on the fucking prison us out of the game plan. There's also the possibility that they just fucking time out here. What is this going to be? Another Sethus. And we'll just let them do their thing. Like I said, there is a possibility that they just time themselves out. They got, I mean, 10 minutes should be plenty, but we've also seen them walk away for five, so. They don't have a particularly fast clock at the moment either. All right, so we're going to play our Patrick Automaton. Question is, are they going to pop their seal of fire? No. Interesting. Are they going to pop it now? No. Okay. What, did they find the fucking force or something? Do they just not give a fuck? Uh, they might just not give a fuck. Okay. What is he going to exile? Is he going after the Lion's Eye Diamond? No, he just punted. Okay. That's fine. That, that's A-OK -okay by me, buddy. Now I'm just going to sit here and masturbate again, which is fine. He's got all the men in the world to do whatever the fuck he wants at this point, so... I mean, the other possibility is, is he might fucking cycle through his deck and fucking mill himself out. So who the fuck knows?
That's a lot of mana. Is this a build that plays Emrakul? <laughs> Green Sun X equals two, so I'm assuming this is for a Destiny Spinner, yeah. So what, is he just gonna activate it? And make his shit big? Okay. Okay. I mean, if he just activates the Destiny Spinner, we're dead. So I don't know why he's not. Okay, there you go. Okay. Okay. You got a block so I don't die. Go to five, go to three. Oh my God, did we get there? Oh my God. <laughs> if they have no way to interact with this, we got there. All right, let let. Okay, that's fine. That's totally fucking fine. Oh, you cocksucker! All right, all right, you got it, you fucking piece of shit. Of course, he had enough to be able to fucking pitch everything to these two fucking cards. Oh, that that was fucking bullshit. <laughs> Whatever. Whatever. On to the next one. I still really want to see... I'm going to have to go back and watch and see if that's the same fucking guy we played that first match against, because that's bullshit if Moto paired us against the same guy twice. But oh well. We shall see. On to the next one. I will say, at least, even with that being a... Clearly, you could tell that was not a good matchup for us, but even in our bad matchups like that, at least it feels like we're not completely dead at any fucking moment. Uh, let's see here. So I've got a bunch of combo pieces in hand, but I've got no lock pieces. EE could be good, depending on what our opponent's on. <sighs> I got fast mana, but nothing to really do with it. Like, I want to keep this. I could Ballista on turn one just to have something on board. Unfortunately, I have only one source of colored mana. I've also been getting fucked mulliganing, so I don't really want to. Even though I feel like it's probably the correct move here. Um... I think we're going to keep this. We're just going to run out of Ballista on one to try to kill whatever the fuck he's got. So hopefully he's got like a fucking something stupid. Like a DRC or a Delver or something we can kill here. Hopefully we're not up against fucking turn one combo deck. Okay, so it's not a turn one combo deck, so that helps us. This EE is looking pretty bad, though. Um...
So he didn't have the force to begin with. So we're gonna try to go for it, fuck it. If he forces it, he forces it. Okay, he's, no, he's brainstorming. Okay, so he's looking for a force. Does this resolve? No, okay. But it gets shit out of his hand, so that helps us a little bit at least. This is probably just blue-white control of some sort. Oh, no, Esper or something. Interesting. Okay. Interesting. I'm a little confused about what's going on here, but oh, okay. So you're going to play this on human? And then we're basically just going to try to go off next turn. So I don't like that he's holding up mana, but it is what it is sort of thing. I'm a little worried about him reanimating this grief to grab this fucking Oriox Salvagers, but he also could just have some kind of removal to kill the Oriox Salvagers before I get to do anything with it, and that way he also sees the combo coming. So I think, I think it's safer in our hand. Okay, so this is reanimator of some kind. So the question is, is does he have what he needs to? Does he have the reanimation spell? Okay, so he's got an animate dead. We're gonna see if he draws what he needs to to be able to win here, because he is only at, he's gonna go down to three probably. Okay, so he's not actually going to. All right, so I guess it's going to come down to, does he have... Ah, shit, I was supposed to make a current struck. God damn it. Okay, it comes down to, does he have the Force of Wills? Grab my lines, I diamond. Do you have Force of Will? Is he F6 through the turn? No, he did not F6. He's looking for it. <laughs> he found it? Oh, he found it. All right. Problem is, is he's going to get in it with an attack, and then he's going to get more life. So we're not totally dead yet, which is why I'm not scooping. Because if I get colored mana, I can start trying to do it again next turn, assuming he doesn't fucking destroy this. The good part is, is we know what we're up against now, so we can sideboard better for next game. He can't activate Gristlebrand again or he's dead. Teferi. I'm assuming he's bouncing the Oriox Salvagers? Okay, he's bouncing the Salvager. I mean, that's a thing, I guess. I just gotta discard a bunch of cards. Well, we're going to kill the fairy. Oh, no, that fuck. That puts us to dead. God damn it. All right. Well, this is the deck that we are shitty against game one. Like... I have a very, very low win percentage game one against reanimator decks, but uh, let's see. Reality chip isn't really doing much of anything. 
I've also never had this much fucking trouble with, uh... I don't think we're doing shit with the automatons, honestly. We're either comboing or we're prisoning again. I never had this much problem with getting my fucking colors of mana, either. This is, like, the hardest time I have ever had with mana. So that's a little frustrating, but we'll see. Luckily against reanimator decks, granted this is Esper reanimator, which is a little weird. But normally against reanimator decks, I I end up taking the second two games pretty easily. So we'll see where this goes. We'll give it a shot. The nice part is, is, at least with the reanimate, in, in Esper, they shouldn't have, like, the normal artifact destruction stuff that you would expect out of them, so. Okay, Rita. So, this is a chalice on one on turn one, but then not really doing much else. It'll stop some of their reanimation spells, but not all of them. It'll also stop an Entomb. And I can get Graveyard Hate in three turns, if that's enough. I think we're going to give it a shot. Oh, fuck me. I pressed the wrong goddamn button. I'm an idiot. It's okay, guys. We were just mulliganing for the Ley Line. That, that's what we were doing. <laughs> um, Since we're not doing shit anyway, we're going to put our combo pieces back. I was going to go ahead and play out the fucking saga. It's okay, guys. We meant to do this. It's fine. <laughs> Probably going to add my Karn griefed away. Uh, well, I mean, he's still got fucking... Uh, he can evoke grief, so my Karn's probably going away. Basically not. Okay, so there's our graveyard hate. So we've got even more fucking graveyard hate now. We have fucking layers of graveyard hate. Alright, so we're gonna cast Tormod's Crypt. Play another Urza Saga. Pass the turn. We're gonna make a construct. Because we're not actually going to end up going down an artifact or mana at all, really. Because we're going to be able to make a card instruct. We'll get a mana back by being able to go get, like, a Mox Opal or something. Okay. So let's make a card instruct. Another Leyline of the Void. So we're going to... Make a mana. Leyline was probably the literal worst possible draw we could have gotten there. Are you going to let our shit resolve, opponents? Thank you. We are going to go get a Mox Opal. We're going to make another card chart. Unfortunately, now we're going to be going down mana. Get a brainstorm. So yeah, we're kind of just on the Karn beat or Karn Shark beat down plan now. Unfortunately, the fact that we have not drawn a land at all is painful. I'm assuming this is going to be a Teferi to bounce one of our Constructs. Okay, apparently not. Oh, man. Fuck, I need mana. Um, okay, we're going we're gonna to make some mana there. Uh, unfortunately, we have to go get a fucking Petal. 
And now we just gotta hope we draw some fucking lands. I mean, luckily we do have a fucking two-turn clock here if he can't figure out how to deal with these things. Does he have a Wrath? Is that what he's going for? Okay, no, he's Faithful Mending. So he's gonna gain some life back. So if he gets rid of a construct, he still has something to do. So if he ferries away a construct, okay. So if he's not conceding, he's got something to do here. Um, fuck. I mean, this does actually put us up mana, just not this turn. So it's going to be, what does he do here? So he's, he clearly has some way to deal with this. So he's going to flash in a Cathar Commando to kill one of them? Okay. So that buys him another turn. Why am I getting so fucking mana screwed? Like, a soul land would be fucking phenomenal here. Okay, that's a soul land. Um, so I think we want to attack first, see what he fucking does. So we're going to attack and see what happens first. Try to get him to spend some cards. He's got another Cathar Commando. God fucking damn it. Okay, so he's spending it on the construct. That's actually not the worst thing in the world for us. Um, so let's see. We can run out Helm. Or we can try to run out Karn, see if it eats something. Because we can also always get Lion's Eye Diamond and go for the Helm kill next turn. So yeah, I think I want to run out Karn. Because if it's going to eat a force, I'd rather the Karn eat a force than the Helm. Okay. So in theory, if he doesn't have anything else here, he doesn't have a way to blow up any of my artifacts. God! Fuck! <laughs> Ugh! And we draw a literally useless fucking card. God damn it, magic gods. What the fuck? We are drawing literally fucking nothing. What the actual fuck? Yep, do your thing. Oh my fucking god. You've got to be fucking kidding me. Yep, take my ley line, buddy. Have fucking fun. Oh my fucking god. <laughs> okay. Well, today might not be a legacy day. Apparently the magic gods do not want to fucking shine on me. <sighs> Goddamn. Ugh. <sighs> Well, if this continues going at this rate, uh, we, we might switch over to some Pioneer action for the Mana Trader series and just try something else for the day. <laughs>
Because, uh, yeah, apparently this, this is not going well. <laughs> Fuck. Oh, my God. Like, we fucking had it, too, if it wasn't for our deck just shitting on us there. Like, uh, goddamn. Oh, well. You win some, you lose some, and apparently the Magic Gods don't want me to win anything today. Womp, womp, womp. Here we go. We got an opponent. Yes, I would like to play Show Off Garuda. Okay, so this is good. I like this. This is turn one automaton, theoretically turn two Karn or turn two Oriok Salvagers. We're going to keep this. I like this hand. It, this is a good hand. I don't know what our opponent's against. It's probably going to just shit on us because that's the way today's gone, but we're going to give it a shot. Make our automaton a little bit bigger. Well, if we're up against fucking Reanimator again, and they got the turn one kill, or we're up against fucking Storm or some stupid shit. No, we're up at Charbelcher? Is this a turn one fucking Belcher? No, this is Storm. Kind of? I don't know what's going on here. Oh! It's Oops All Spells. Apparently today is the day that we're just up against fucking turn one combo decks. Well, I'll let y'all see what this does, because they have the win here. That's... This is also basically going to be mulligan for fucking, uh... Who was it? Where, where, where is that stupid fucking thing? There should be a Thassa's Oracle in here somewhere. Yeah, there it is. I don't know why he's doing that. Um, actually, we're going to concede so he doesn't see what we're doing here. He's going to dread return back a fucking Thassa's Oracle to win the game. So we are going to go to game two. Um, so that's Oops All Spells. It very easily can win on turn zero or turn one, but it also is super weak to graveyard hate. So we're basically just going to mulligan for a ley line. Granted, Force of Vigor has greatly helped this deck as well, so it actually does have ways out of a turn zero ley line. The printing of the uh, dual face lands also has greatly helped this deck, because now they can actually play fucking lands... Because before it was only fucking mana rocks and like spirit guides and shit that they could use for mana. So apparently today is just going to be the day of uh, facing turn one combo decks all fucking day. <laughs> oh fuck. Okay. 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 Shit happens. Shit happens. If our opponent would sideboard a little bit faster. Would be appreciated. Uh, and we'll actually bring that in, too, just for the hell of it. And yeah, we'll do a 61 card special, that's fine. I don't know, I like bringing in the, uh, helm when I bring the combo in. Like, when I bring the ley lines in, I like to bring the helm, too, just to be safe. Um... So Chalice on zero against them is actually really fucking funny. Um... But there's not really shit else we can do here is the problem. Because I can run out a Chalice on 1 on turn 1, or Chalice on 0. I think we got a mulligan this. Um, here we can Ether Sworn Cannonist, but it only delays them by a turn. I think we want a mulligan again. Alright, I guess we'll keep this one. Um, we'll put a redundant chalice to the bottom. 
and the redundant tomb to the bottom. Unfortunately, the Chalice on Zero is going to hurt us also. Like, problem is, is a lot of the decks Chalice is good against are also fucking zero drop decks. So it's really fucking awkward having something like this in our hand where it's like, it's going to be great for us, but it's also going to be really good against the opponent too. And then this should shut off their mana rocks. Assuming they don't just have the fucking Force of Vigor in hand and they're going to turn zero everything. So unless they're... I don't even know. I should actually look to see if their deck had the fucking Spirit Guides in it last time or not. Because I have no idea if they have Spirit Guides or not. Okay. So they theoretically have mana for next turn, but the ley line kind of fucks them over. Um, this is also a Karn this turn. I'm trying to think, where can we even get out of our sideboard? Um, liquid Metal Coating is funny, but it's not going to do anything until next turn. The problem is, is whatever we get isn't going to do anything until next turn. Um... So I half want to say that we want to get probably the LED to set up for the lock next turn, I think is what we want to do here. Uh, so this also shuts off their artifact mana. Um, hmm. Very, fuck, what do we get? So, like I said, we could we could get LED to set up for the lock next turn. Um, nothing we get here is actually going to matter this turn. So I feel like probably getting the LED to set up for next turn is the correct answer. They still need to actually present an answer for the Ley Line of the Void. Which they could be sandbag and a force. That is very possible. But I feel like they would have popped it off by now. Um, I could grab the liquid metal coating, play it next turn, start eating lands, but at that point it's like if we're surviving until next turn, we're just better off going for the fucking lock. They also could have the Seiju, so they theoretically could get out from under the lock. Um, trying to think of what we can do here. Like I said, whatever I grab now, I can't play next turn anyway. Or I can't do anything with it until next turn anyways. Um, it's an activated ability. That doesn't help us. I feel like our best option is just set up for the lock next turn. But again, if they have Besaju, it gets them out of it. But also if they have Besaju, they should be going after the fucking Lion's Eye Diamond anyways. Or not the lines I done. Yeah, we're we're just gonna set up for next turn. We're just gonna hope they don't have it. It's all we really can do at this point. So they didn't have the force, so I mean that's something. Oh sh fuck, I'm an idiot. It's fine. I, I can't fucking use this anyways. That's fine. Everything's fine. Fuck I'm a moron. Oh my god. I'm dumb. <laughs> Forgot, I have a chalice on zero. I can't do anything anyways. I am a fucking moron. And he's going for it anyways now. Probably, I don't know. What are you doing? Doesn't this lose him the game? Oh, he's doing it against me. Okay. I mean, I guess that's something. Um, so fuck, since I'm an idiot, oh, god damn it, okay, so what can I grab now that is actually going to be fucking relevant? Um, 
Patrick Automaton doesn't seem terrible. It'll just block the spy. I've got two, three, four, five mana. So I can't even cast Worm Coil Engine. I can cast Walking Ballista for two. I could Reality Chip and start trying to get shit off the top of my deck. I could Ensnaring Bridge and just hold him off from being able to kill the Karn. Unfortunately, that's buying him a bunch of time. Yeah, I think that's really my only realistic option. Well, I mean, the Karn's gonna... Actually, the Karn's gonna fucking die anyways. God damn it. These fucking Karn boards fuck me up every time. Um... I'm not getting up to four colors of mana for EE, so Balistrude Spy is gonna stick around regardless. As weird as it sounds, I half think the reality chip is what we want to grab here. Like, it sucks losing Karn. Or we could just plus Karn. As dumb as it is, we could plus Karn on our own Chalice, kill it, play our Lion's Eye Diamond. But then that doesn't do anything. You can plus Karn on Azorius Signet to get a blocker, but that's not going to do anything either. Plus and Karn doesn't let us do anything this turn. So yeah, as much as this sucks, I think we're going to go ahead and grab a Reality Chip. And just play it. Play the land. Did I already play land this turn? Does it not let me play lands? No. Oh, I played Caracas this turn. Okay. So I've got a blocker, at least for now, and I got some form of card advantage. Unfortunately, this is going to give him time to figure shit out. I'll take two, that's fine. I'm not going to risk losing this reality chip yet. <sighs> what the fuck, deck? Play the Caracas. Okay, what the actual fuck is going on here? Why is it not letting me... Oh, as long as it's attached to a creature. God damn it. Okay, this card is bad. <laughs> this card is actually pretty bad now that I think about it. So now, now we're just going to fucking block. We know we're not... Oh, it's got flying? I can't even block it? God damn it. We're going to lose to Balistrude's by fucking shit. Okay. We're playing Garuda. Um, shit, I should have tapped there. Whatever. Fuck it. We're going to do this the right way. We're, we're just going to fucking play Garuda. Or put Garuda in our hand. Because I can't play that anyways. Yeah. God fucking damn it. Oh god. We're, we're just gonna put Garuda in our hand. I, I way over tapped. Yep, that's fine. Oh god damn it. This is what I get for playing new fucking cards. Fucking reality chip bullshit. So at least we have the mana to play Garuda next turn. However, it did speed up their clock a little bit. Okay, so he's gonna know that, Okay, so he's gonna try to speed up his clock. We're gonna hope we hit something good off of this fucking Garuda. Can't even cast that anyway. So we need tap this for that. Three, four, five, six. Play Garuda. Hit something good. Get back at the Sworn Cannonist. And pass the turn. We still need something to deal with this fucking Balistrude Spy, though. We're drawing a Ley Line of the Void, which is not good for us. We're just going to lose to the fucking Balistrude Spy beatdowns. Alright, it's what, four to attach to a creature? Uh, 
Play the City of Traders. There's an Urza we can't do anything with. So, I mean, we're going to pass the turn and just hope this fucking Urza can get us out of it. Because we're going to play Urza and then fucking spin it. I swear to God, if we lose to the fucking Dallas Streets by beatdowns, a little too cavalier with our life total there, apparently. Come on, give me something good, goddammit. Give me something useful. Adwara. I can't channel from here, right? Channel has to be from here. No. <coughs> Lost me. Alright, so... We're gonna tap this. We're gonna play the Adwara. Alright, Cavern Souls is fucking useless here. Uh, make a blue. Blue. Play this and hope we spin into something good. It's basically all we can do at this point. Tap for mana. Use that mana. Tap for mana. Tap for mana. Tap for mana. Spin us into something good, Urza. You fucking piece of shit. Oh my god. <sighs> Fuck. Well, apparently the magic gods don't want us to do fucking shit today. <laughs> Start out with great fucking hands and then we just do that where we draw a bunch of useless fucking shit. And our hate cards hurt our opponent but apparently hurt us more. Oh, well, it is what it is sometimes. The magic gods giveth and the magic gods taketh. If we lose one more, we're just going to fucking drop and we'll go play something else. Like I said, we might go do that, uh, might go play with Pioneer for a little bit. Because apparently that's what everyone fucking likes. I've been playing the format a little bit. It's just... It's okay. Like, it's not this fucking Wonderland everyone keeps saying it is. It's it's very heavily dominated by blue and red decks. Like, I was playing it for a bit, and my first ten matches, all but two of them were either against Mono Red Burn or Phoenix. So, it's not diverse by any means. It's got some funny decks in it. Like, the, the Lotus Field combo deck is actually kind of fun to play, but it's been so long since I played it, and the win cons are different, that I... I fucking popped off, like, three Emergent Ultimatums and could not figure out what the hell the piles to win were. So I popped it off, like, three fucking times and ended up just conceding the match because I had, like, two minutes left on the timer trying to figure out what the fuck to do. It was so much easier to play that deck when I had Underworld Breach. But I've been having fun with the Marty Grease Fang deck. Like, if we can at least get half of our fucking, uh... Entry feedback, we'll keep playing. If we lose this, we'll just fucking drop out and we'll go play Pioneer for the Mana Trader series for a little bit. Alright, we're on the play. Reveal Gerudo. So, I've got a fast Ariac Salvagers into Lion's Eye Diamond, but nothing to back it up. We've got all of our fluff in our hand already, so honestly, I think I'm just gonna fucking keep it. If I wanted to get real risky, I've got to turn one Salvagers, but I'm not going to do that. And now it's going to get discarded. Thoughtsies? Thoughtsies. Alright, there goes our Salvador, so maybe I should have fucking run it out.
Unless he decides to take something else for some weird ass fucking reason. I feel like he has to take the salvagers, yeah. Urza Saga isn't terrible here. Um I think we want to play that out. Well because we can always go on the Karnstruck plan here. Pona is also apparently taking fucking forever. So the other thing we could do here also, which I think we're gonna do, assuming he doesn't fuck with all of this shit, I think we actually can get Garuda next turn and cast it to get back the Salvagers to set up. So a lot of his also is gonna depend on what the fuck our opponent's doing here. Because this could be anything. This could be Reanimator. This could be Storm. This could just be some kind of control deck. <sighs> Whatever it is, he's not popping off yet. So... Okay, so let's see how much mana we've got. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 9, 10. So we do have enough mana to Garuda, which I think is actually what we're going to do here. So the question just becomes, is we have the mana to be able to cast Garuda, but since we haven't seen what they're doing, I think we actually want to put this on fucking... What is this? Demon Kraken? We're putting it on fucking Kraken. <laughs> just so we know our fucking Garuda is going to resolve. Get Garuda. Play Garuda. Blue. Blue. Thingy. Thingy. How much more mana do I need? I need one, so I only have to pop one Lotus Petal. At the very least, we're getting Oriox Salvagers back, if not something else. Wait, what? Each player mills for a creature card with even mana value from one of the cards. Oh, it has to be from the cards milled? God damn it. Again, card I am not used to fucking playing. Now it's probably just going to get killed. <laughs> but at least we have a body on the battlefield. Didn't mill over two cards, which is a little unfortunate, but... So this might just be Grixis control? No, it's actually Storm, and they're Infernal Tutoring to get a line. Does that mean they have another Infernal Tutor in hand? No. That's interesting. Well, we got a Ballista. Um, so we're just going to make a Construct just so we have a fucking body on the battlefield here. And then we're probably going to go grab Tormod's Crypt. Okay. Is he stifling me? No. Blue, black. What the fuck? Okay. Um, yep, we're gonna grab Tormod's Crypt. We're gonna go attack. This hopefully fucks up their ad nauseums. <laughs> and then we're gonna Ballista X equals 1. And the question comes is, when do we crack this Tormod's Crypt? Probably after they dump their hand for Lion's Eye Diamond. 
or in re I mean, we're presenting lethal on board, so they have to go for it this turn. I'm gonna brainstorm. They're they're still looking. So this fucks up their past in flames. This fucks up. Uh, their Cabal Rituals, assuming they don't have multiples. But they do have a full grip of cards here to try to pop off, and we know they have a Lion's Eye Diamond. Unfortunately, Lion's Eye Diamond into the fucking wheel effect is a bitch because you can't fucking respond to it, but at that point, I would just crack the Tormod's Crypt in response to the Diamond. Either that, or I could just fucking Tormod's Crypt in response to the Echo so that they don't shuffle their graveyard back in. So that's really what it's going to come down to, is do we want to... I mean, fuck, if they got the Aeons, then we fucking do it. That double Lion's Eye Diamond... So if he's got the Aeons, we just fucking crack it. Infernal Tutor, Dark Petition. So is he just going for it? So he chucked his hand, so he didn't have an Echo of Aeons. Does he have an Ad Nauseam? Either that, or he's trying to actually find the fucking tendrils. He finds the tendrils in these cards. Does he have the tendril? Ad nause. Okay. So with ad nauseum, we're going to hit him. So this fucks up his ad nause. He has less time to go. So we're going to see what he reveals here. Cabal Ritual. Dark Ritual. Cabal Ritual. Lion's Eye Diamond. If he hits an Ad Nauseam, he's dead. Thoughtsies, Thoughtsies. Dark Ritual. If he hits anything, he's dead. Hey, we got there. <laughs> And he's just gonna keep going. <laughs> Alright, cool. Cool, 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 cool. So, Storm. After Sworn, in. Ley Lines, in. Helm, in. E can go away because it's irrelevant. Reality Chip can go away, it's irrelevant. Um, Automatons can beat down, but again, this is. I feel like all of these matchups we're having today are basically just like fucking lock them out or combo. Like, I feel like the automatons have not been good today. So I think we're going to try something like that. We're looking for turn zero ley line and then like a quick chalice, I think. Either that or a quick Karn. Because Karn will shut off all of their fucking artifact mana. And a chalice will cut off. Mo well, there we go. We got a ley line and a chalice. <sighs> Unfortunately, it's not a turn one chalice, but. Well, actually, it is a turn one chalice. It'll be fucking Lotus Petal. So I guess we're going with this plan. We're going to keep. Please don't thaw seize me. Aw, you prick. <laughs> All right, come on. Chalice off the top. Chalice off the top. Face the chalice, as we knew he would. Okay, Karn ain't bad. Put this on human. Hello. There we go. Uh, we're just going to cast these to get him out of our hand so he can't thought tease them.
So a soul land would be awesome. Another artifact would be awesome. Like another zero drop artifact, because then we can hammer out Karn. And then he has to go for it the old fashioned way. That is basically the opposite of what I needed. Ugh, like the literal opposite of a fucking land or zero drop artifact. <laughs> So luckily we have kind of slowed them down a bit, so at least in theory they shouldn't just fucking pop off here, because if they do, they're going to have to do it the hard way. Well, there goes Karn. <laughs> He's drawn into all the fucking discard. I mean, we're still on the zero drop artifact or land plan, and then we can get a Urza, and then hopefully we can get something. Luckily, the ley line is hampering them, so they have to combo off the hard way. He is getting a lot of looks. A, a chalice off the top also wouldn't be terrible either. Like a chalice on one just to slow him down even more would not be a bad thing. But with the way our deck has been treating us today, it's probably just going to shit on us because it wants to. There's an artifact. Okay, so not exactly the way I wanted. Oh, actually, hold on. We're going to leave this up. Uh, no, actually, we need to fucking use it. Oh, god damn it. Fucking A. Pop for the wrong fucking color. Pop for blue. Because we need to keep the fucking artifacts up so that our Mox Opal is still online. I'd like to keep the Caracas up to be able to bounce Urza if I need to, but we need to be able to keep our fucking shit online. There's also something to be said about possibly just playing the other Urza to get another Karnstruct and start going to town, but... We have four mana, so we can have the part where you can just hard cast a fucking Ad Nauseam. I'm also a little hesitant to spin Urza, because our Urza spins today have been absolutely fucking terrible. I had three Urza spins into fucking Urza Sagas yesterday in a row. Like, legit, just three for three in an Urza Saga. <laughs> so, anyone watching this, please explain this to me. So, it says you may play that card without paying its mana cost. Play in titles that you can use lands. Because you can play a land. You do not cast a land. And because it says play... In theory, by the wording, you should be able to play a land off of Urza's spin if you haven't played a land. Correct? Or is this just another one of those weird wordings that isn't actually true to how it's worded? Okay, our opponent has an upkeep stop. Urkel's recall. Okay. It's on our, eh, this is on our upkeep, so it's actually kind of irrelevant. So, fuck it, whatever. Yeah, it's fine. I can replay almost all of these anyway, so it's kind of irrelevant. Yeah, that's fine. We'll lose our mana. That's fine. What do we draw? 
Do you have something else going on? No. Okay. So Aethersworn Canonist is fucking great for us. Aetherstorm's Canonist is fucking amazing for us. However, it does set us back a turn. There is also something to be said. Like I said, next turn I honestly might just fucking play Urza off of Urza mana to get another card instruct. So the nice part is, is we're doing a pretty good job about slowing our opponent down here. So I would like a faster clock, but okay. So he's gonna abrupt decay it. I had a feeling something like that was probably gonna happen. But luckily, it's, I would really like to hit a fucking chalice or like a Karn or something. Like, the fact that we basically aren't hitting shit right now is really fucking annoying. Because we were giving our opponent all the fucking time in the world to figure out how to get out of this. It would really help if our deck could give us something good here. Walking Ballista. It's not the worst thing in the fucking world. So I think we're going to cast Ballista for two. Just to have another artifact on the battlefield, and that way also we can try to fuck up their Ad Nauseums again, like we did last time. This also gives us enough mana to spin Urza. The problem is, is like I said, we have such a fucking slow clock. Urza being a 1-4, like the toughness on it is awesome, but the fact that he's only chipping in for one damage a turn is kind of annoying. That being said, if he somehow manages to start trying to pop off and do his thing, we can at least decrease the amount of things he can hit off of fucking Ad Nauseam. Because last, last game that was actually key. There's actually been more games than not where it's been relevant just hitting something. Okay, so he might be fucking going for it now. Because he might be desperate enough to try to fucking do it. Assuming this is an Infernal Tutor. So he's probably desperate enough now that he's just going to fucking go for it. He's probably going to Infernal Tutor, pop this in response, get ad nauseum, and hope that he can get what he needs to. Hopefully 11 is too low. Either that, I mean, there's no storm count, so he doesn't actually have the fucking um, tendrils in hand. He could mini tendrils here, but since there's no storm count, he doesn't have it. Okay, so there's the Infernal Tutor, which means he, he's 100% fucking going for it now. So it's just going to be is... Is 11 enough life for him to go off is going to be the question. Because now he's going to cat... Either that or he might be getting the tendrils specifically just to try to stay alive. Okay, so it is ad nauseum. So we're going to see, is 11 enough for you to... Go off, buddy. Okay. That might do it. The Infernal Tutor and Lion Zai Diamond together might do it. They still gotta get to 10, so maybe not. I would love it if he drew fucking ad nauseum, because that would be hilarious. I think he has it here. It's very unlikely he doesn't. Well, I don't know. I, I don't know this deck well enough to know if that pile can win or not. I laugh my ass off if he does this again and hits fucking ten. Well, tendrils is only four actually, so he wouldn't be dead to tendrils.
This also might be just enough. Okay, so he is going to stop here. So this very well might be enough. Again, I don't know this deck well enough to know if it is or not. So, I mean, there's nothing we can do here anyway, so we're just going to yield through the turn. We're going to let him do his thing. He's going to thought seize away this. He's going to ponder. He's going to ritual. Lion's Eye Diamond. I mean, this should be enough. I'd be very surprised if it's not. But we're going to give him the opportunity to fuck this up somehow. So there's that one. There's that one. Because he should just be able to Infernal Tutor. He has the mana. Get whatchamacallit. That would be nine. Nine copies is ten. That should be enough. Because he gets tendrils here. Cast tendrils. Tendrils is nine. Get nine copies of it. Right? Because this should be lethal. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, Storm Count. Okay, yeah. He's got it. Okay. We just didn't fucking draw shit is the problem. Again, we, we get our lock set up, and then we just don't draw a way to finish the fucking game. So, we're, we're just gonna run it back. I mean, that, that's the story of the deck today. Like, nor Funny part is, is I was fucking around in the free rooms before I started fucking streaming today, and I was crushing it there. Just as soon as I get into the fucking league, my deck is like, no, here's your lock, but we're not going to let you actually do anything. Oh, no. Maybe we'll take that out, put that back in. Assuming that wasn't too late. It, it's freezing here, so. Alright, let's see. So we've got a ley line and a quick carn, assuming they don't have a fucking uh whatchamacallit, so we're gonna keep. Alright, are they gonna thought seize our carn is what this all fucking comes down to. We're gonna grab this on human what's up girl wake up from your nap okay so i mean it, it's all gonna come down to what the fuck do they got can they thought seize me right off the bat or can they blow up this ley line and just combo off okay ponder I, a chalice off the top would be fucking phenomenal here. Hey, baby girl. What's up? What's up, girl? Hello. I know, I know, I know, I know. A lotus petal would actually be pretty sweet off the top here, because then I could just run out Karn. Jesus. Does he really have a turn one? Even through the fucking ley line? Okay, so there goes Karn. Which is annoying. Not the end of the world. So he's gonna empty the Warrens. Okay, well that's a fucking problem. Okay, so apparently today is not Bomberman's day. Because our deck doesn't want to fucking cooperate with us whatso goddamn ever. I have two turns to figure out how the fuck to get out of this. That doesn't do it. Alright, we're done. We're done with Bomberman for the day. Our, our deck is deciding to not want to fucking cooperate with us, so... We are going to drop this. We are going to take a quick break. We're going to switch to Pioneer. Um... Yeah, that, like I said, the problem is, is I was fucking crushing it in the fucking free rooms, and then my deck is just like, no, here's your lock and no fucking finisher. So, 
We're going to take a quick break. I am going to go ahead and pitch this deck back, and we're going to play some fucking Pioneer. So I will catch you guys here in just a moment. Um, so see you in a few. All right, yo, I'm back. Um, so apparently with how fucking popular Pioneer is right now, um, we're going to be missing two of our sideboard cards. So this is a Grease Fang Reanimator deck. Uh, for those of you who haven't seen it before, basically you're just bidding one of these two big-ass artifacts, Parhelion 2 or Sky Sovereign, into the graveyard, reanimating it with a Grease Fang. Um, apparently, because of how fucking popular Pioneer is right now, like I said, Mana Traders doesn't actually have all of the cards, so we're actually going to be missing the Graveyard Trespassers. So we're just going to try it without for now, because I don't feel like sitting here and waiting around trying to wait for somebody to fucking return them. So we're going to give it a shot. We'll be doing this for the Mana Trader series also, so... This is a little annoying that they don't have two of the cards, but I've never actually seen them have a fucking issue with running out of cards until this past week. This is the first time I've ever seen them actually have a problem with having enough fucking cards. But apparently, since Pioneer is the Pro Tour format, they just don't have shit, so... Ryan here. What's up, girl? Hello. Did you have a good nap? So as you can see, only 73 cards. We're missing the two fucking Graveyard Trespassers. Um, see if by some miracle in the time it took us to fucking do that. No, they still don't have them. So we're just going to play without the Graveyard Trespassers because I don't feel like fucking around with doing shit. What's up, Nahiri? Hello. Hi, girl. Hello. Okay. So. Whoops. Got to update with versions in my deck. All right, and let's find a fucking opponent. Okay, so. For those of you who haven't played in this before, and I literally just started now, apparently what they do is you actually play in the tournament practice rooms, and Mana Traders finds you an opponent. And then you basically just challenge them and do one of these sort of things. So, like, this person's in the series waiting for a secret as in man. 
So when this finds me an opponent, it's going to tell me to either create something waiting for that person, or it's going to be like, hey, look for this person saying they're waiting for you. So the nice part is, is it's like basically a real free tournament, so to speak. Um, so it's a real tournament. You can qualify for prizes and shit, but it doesn't actually cost you anything other than your membership with Mana Traders. So that's always fun. Assuming you can find me an opponent. It is having issues currently. So if we can't find opponents, maybe we'll just take this fucking shit through a league. Um... Shit, I forgot to update my deck list. Hold on here, guys. While we're waiting to find an opponent, we're, we're going to update the deck list real quick. I think I put it in. I'm fairly certain I put it in here. Come on. All right, girl. I know. I know, I know, I know. Okay. So, deck list should be updated. This is what we're playing. As I said, minus the... Uh, Okay, so found me an opponent. It's minus the graveyard trespassers. All right, so let's get an opponent. Let's play one for this series. Hey, we found him super quick, apparently. That is our opponent, right? I have had an issue where they, like, somebody else queues in instead. I have had that happen on more than one occasion. Um, so this is completely unkeepable. We have a Parhelion, but we don't have a way to reanimate it, and we have no way to get it in the graveyard in the first place. So we just want to chuck that. Um, this is risky as a one-lander, but I think we keep it. Um, we probably want to get rid of one of the Deadly Disputes. And we kind of just want to hope that we hit lands. So we're going to give this a shot. Let me also update this shit. We are not playing Legacy Guy Ruda anymore. Alright. That is correct. We are now on Grease Fang. So let's see what we have off of this. Alright, so Lightning Axe, a Blood Crypt, and a Blood Tide Harvester. So we really fucking want to land here. I'm going to take some more stops up. That's fine. Okay, so we're up against Spirits. That's interesting. Um, that is not land, but it allows us to chuck some shit, so I guess it does something anyways. Gonna do a little damage. Gonna schwack our opponent real quick. Okay. Move it on. And my wife is back to asking me about kittens. <laughs> Which one do you like? She just sent me fucking pictures of a orange tabby and a white long-haired one. Okay, so it's Bant Spirits, not just straight blue or blue-white. So this actually might just be like Bant Flyers or some shit. The fact that he's leaving two mana up makes me think he's got a rattle chains. Why? It's a free attack. Okay, so the nice part is, is this is a guaranteed Parhelion in the grave. We really need a goddamn land, though. So we're going to get in. I should probably should attack with a Epic here as well, but whatever. Um... Please, for the love of God, give us a fucking land. Land? Land? Oh, thank God, land. Not the color I Well, I mean, I guess I want white mana anyways, but... So, we can play... We can actually dispute next turn to draw some cards and fucking... What are you doing? Is this a rattle chains? Are you being... You had a free fucking attack, and you didn't take it. I'm assuming this is a rattle chains. Okay, yeah, it's a fucking rattle chains. What the fuck, dude? You had a free attack for two damage before. 
Yeah, that's fine. So what is this? Counter target instant or sorcery? So he does have the ability to possibly fuck us up off of this deadly dispute. But either way, he like we're just gonna fucking swing it next turn anyways, so. If he wants to sacrifice his mausoleum wanderer to counter a deadly dispute, I'm kind of fine with that, because we're also going to play the Stitcher Supplier, so... So we have another Stitcher Supplier. I think we're just going to go ahead and swing in and hold up this deadly dispute. Um, or we might actually just play the deadly dispute to hopefully hit a fucking land. That's honestly probably the correct option here. Um, yeah, we're just going to go ahead and fucking go for it. Fuck it. Because if he wants to sack this Mausoleum Wanderer, that's fine. We have the can't stay away in case we hit a Grease Fang. No, he lets it happen. Got a Sky Sovereign in the grave. Man? Oh, he's going to Spell Queller it. Okay. That's kind of annoying. Okay. That's not great, but it's not the end of the world. Like, if we land Stitcher Supplier, mill over a Grease Fang, or if we just fucking draw a Grease Fang, as long as he doesn't have another fucking Spell Queller. We are on a clock, though, which is a little annoying. Okay, so Fatal Push isn't bad, actually. Um, So we're going to do this. We're going to take another hit, which is fine. gonna mill some more shit. Do we hit a Grease Fang is the question. No, we still haven't hit a Grease Fang. We're gonna get in for one. I'm just gonna tap him a little bit. A little tappy tappy. So next turn we theoretically can get our fucking uh, this back, assuming they don't have another fucking Spell Queller. Okay, so he's gonna... Oh yeah, it gets flashed because of that. That's... Two, five, eight, fuck. Okay. You got me, buddy. You got me. Well, apparently we're back to Moto not wanting us to draw shit. Um, bring in the portable holes. Bring in the fatal push. Kind of just trim some combo pieces, basically. I know why Fable of the Mirror Breaker is in this deck, but again, I really don't fucking like it. Like, I understand I'm probably wrong, but more often than not, I'm just fucking chucking it anyways. Like, I get why it's in the deck, but... I don't know, maybe I'm just fucking terrible at building decks. That's always a possibility as well. Alright, let's go. Okay, so we already learned, don't keep one-landers. So we'll keep this. We're going to get rid of the Urborg because we have so much black mana anyways. It's kind of irrelevant. We're going to play Concealed Courtyard into fucking the red side of this to play Blood Tide Harvester. And then we can sack Blood Tide Harvester to get some shit. So we're going to stick with our original plan still. Because a 3-2 ain't a bad body. He apparently didn't have his fucking Mausoleum Wanderer or whatever the fuck the one mana flashy one is. Um, fuck, the one that you pay for and draw a card. Whatever that one is. Apparently he didn't have either of those. So... Okay, so he's got a selfless spirit, which is a little annoying, but we're just going to fucking kill it anyways, so. Okay, Grease Fang ain't bad. 
We're going to conceal Courier. We're going to give him the option. So he's not going to block willingly. So we're just going to kill this to get it the fuck out of the way. And then I think we want a deadly dispute now. Or maybe we don't. I don't know. We might see what they do here. Depending on what they play or if they just hold up mana, I might deadly dispute this and hopefully we'll hit fucking whatchamacallit. If he just passes with mana, this is 100% a fucking spell queller. So we won't actually deadly dispute. What are you doing? Okay, so he's just going to cast an Empyrean Eagle. That's fine. So we will Deadly Dispute here. Soren. That's interesting. Portable Hole is only two or less, so that doesn't actually do us anything, which is annoying. We have another Deadly Dispute. Um... This actually might save us some life, as weird as this fucking sounds. So we're gonna tempt them into fucking hitting us, or hitting Soren with this. That's actually kind of the cool Soren. This is the anime one, right? Um. So we're gonna Soren. We're gonna get back Blood Tithe Harvester. So this is hopefully gonna distract his shit to go after that. It also gives us something else to sacrifice to uh, Deadly Dispute. It's part of a hole only hitting something two or less. It's kind of annoying. The nice part is, is he doesn't have Coco Mana yet. So he is going after Soren, so that's buying us some life, which is actually exactly what we want it to do anyways. Him holding up mana is mildly concerning, but... Rest in peace. Well, we have an answer for that, at least. And there's nothing in our graveyard that really fucking matters at the moment. And that's a Parhelion. Um, so I think we just combo off here. I I don't know if they've got actual counter spells. Like legit, no idea if they have actual counter spells. Um, but we're gonna fucking find out. Um, do do do. Risk it for the biscuit. You got an actual counter spell? Nope. This isn't quite lethal. And okay. Um, I'm not super sure how our opponent gets out of this. We're gonna find out. Because admittedly this isn't lethal, but we've got a bunch of attackers and we can basically just do this again. Okay. Opponent gave up anyway, so we got there. Alrighty then. So I think we just run it back. I don't think play draw really fucking matters here. So yeah, we'll we'll just fucking run it back. See what the fuck happens. Uh boy oh boy oh boy. Being on the draw is a little worse. Um, 
We got removal, a bunch of ways to stock the graveyard. One draw spell. But we have mana and stuff we can actually do. Like, this is tempting, but... Like, just the fact that we have mana and things to do makes me want to keep this, but we only have one draw spell. No, I think we're going to give it a shot. We're, we're going to go for it. Mausoleum Wanderer, okay. So... It's a part of me that wants to Fatal Push the Mausoleum Wanderer now. I also kind of want to get down this Concealed Courtyard and get a Citrus Splatter down. I think we're better off waiting, saving this, hopefully, for a fucking Rattle Chains. Okay, so if he pops off a fucking Rest in Peace, there's nothing in the graveyard that matters at the moment. So we're fine with losing all this shit. We can't get any of it back anyways. Selfless Spirit, okay. So I guess that's what's going to actually eat our fucking fatal push, unfortunately. There's a Grease Fang, so that helps. So we're going to see if we can bait them out of sacrifice in this to try to counter it, and then we just lose the whole fucking board. So he's just going to sack it, which is fine. Um, if they have a rest in peace, we're a little sad here. We don't have a fucking way to deal with it, especially if we actually do mill a fucking Parhelion here. But if we don't, and we mill a Parhelion... Okay, well, there's a Parhelion. Uh, we're kind of just hoping that they don't have rest in peace or spell queller. And we should be good. So we're going to see what they do. If they slam a rest in peace, we kind of cry. And we're just playing Grease Fang for the sake of playing Grease Fang as an attacker. If they pass leaving mana up, then it's a hundred fucking percent a spell queller. Yeah, so this is a hundred percent a fucking spell queller. No fucking doubt about it. Which means... We actually might just play the Croxa, honestly. Yeah, I think we're just gonna play the Croxa. <laughs> See if we can bait the spell queller out with the Croxa. And then that hopefully allows us to combo off next turn, depending on what they hold up. They're thinking hard about fucking quelling this thing. They, they are really mulling this over. Okay, so they're going to go for it. They're going to quell it. Okay, so that gets a queller out of their hand, which is good for us. Which hopefully means that... So we're going to see what they do next time. If they leave up mana again, depending on what they have, it either means they have Coco or they have another fucking Spell Queller. They don't have Rip, otherwise they would have fucking blocked in a heartbeat to get more cards out of our deck. Either that or they're just playing incorrectly. Like, if they want to drop a Lord here, I'd be super happy with that. But if they go land, pass, or just pass. Okay, so Lord is fine. That's, that's totally fine. What is it? Lofty Denial is like the fucking one counter spell we have to worry about here. But I have no idea if they play it. Yeah, so, I mean... We have to go for it. We do not have a fucking choice here. Um, so we're going to play this on white. So we're going to play the epic here first, see if they F6 through the turn. Okay, so they didn't F6, which is a little annoying. So they very well might have that lofty denial. But we don't really have a fucking choice. We have to do it because we're dead on board. 
Oh, shit, it lived. Um, yep, we are 100% going to do that. We are going to crew it. Was very worried about them having a lofty denial. <laughs> Get in with everything. And we have a way to pitch this again to do it next turn if we need to. And we've got two flying blockers. He's dead if he doesn't block something with this Supreme Verdict or the Supreme Phantom. I think. 9, 14, 15, 16, yeah. So he has to block something with a Phantom. This is going to be a matter of what our opponent decides they want to block, so... And again, the wife is hardcore on the we are getting a kitten fucking bandwagon. Should not have even said I was considering it. Hey, and they just decided to give up. All right, cool. Cool, 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 cool. Well, apparently we're already doing better in fucking uh, Pioneer. So let's find another opponent. Play a few more of these. A few more, a few more. See if we can find another opponent. So to be able to qualify for the Swiss round of this, you need a 70% win rate with 10 matches, 65% with 20, or 60 with 30. So I honestly don't even know how many matches we're at yet. We're at 12, and I'm currently at 42%. Um, yeah, so I, I got a ways to go, but... A lot of it, too, was yesterday I was kind of just fucking around. I'm not taking this shit too, too seriously, just because it's for funsies. But, uh, yeah. It is what it is. Um, I mean, y'all saw what happened earlier with fucking Bomberman. Our deck was like, here's your lock pieces. I'm never going to give you a way to finish the game. And we just lost because of it. So, it is what it is. It happens sometimes. I mean... That is the one downside about playing combo decks. It also kind of sucks that Watsy honestly seems like they have a fucking hard on for nuking combo decks whenever they can. They apparently don't like them. That and fire design is a goddamn thing. All right, we found an opponent. We're looking for Tiki Dan. Tiki Dan, where are you at? Tiki Dad, what's up? Where are you at, boy? Hey, there we go. That was quick. At least we can have our actual opponents joining. Like I said, I had an issue earlier today where I was fucking playing, and, like, this other dude kept queuing in, even though I had the things, and, like, waiting for so-and-so. Like, dude, I'm fucking playing a game here with, against somebody specific. Leave me the fuck alone. Um, We have one removal spell, one redraw, and a bunch of goddamn lands. I don't even like getting away lands, but I feel like I need to. If I draw a red source, this is fucking great. We are going to keep this, we're going to chuck that, and we're just going to kind of hope we draw a red source. Because if we draw a red source, this hand is awesome. Okay, so I'm going to guess this is Winota. Yes, this is very much fucking Winota. Red source, come on. Red source off the top, please. Red, 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 please, red, red. Something red? Fuck. Said red source, not red card. This is what we bottomed, goddammit. So we are gonna fatal push a fucking. We're gonna fatal push this elf. I should have done it on their upkeep, but it is what it is. Let's put that upkeep sound back. Fable of the Mirror Breaker. 
So yeah, we're 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 pushing this elf. We're just gonna get this out of the fucking way now. Red source. God fucking damn it. What the fuck, magic gods, you piece of fucking shit. All I need is a red source, and this hand is fucking fire. I just need a goddamn red source. And this is apparently just, like, story of our... Okay, so he chucked an Azekas Chariot. He chucked a Pussy Wagon, that's fine. Like, just give me a fucking red source off the top, please. That's all I need. So this looks like Winota. I honestly have no idea if that's normally in Winota or not, but based off of what I'm seeing here, I'm assuming Winota's coming down next turn. Red source, fucking please. Please give me a red source. Thank God. Okay, so I'm assuming this means Winota's coming down next turn, which means if Winota comes down, we are instantly fucking lava axing. Pitching Parhelion, gonna try to reanimate it next turn and hope for the goddamn best. So the question becomes is, are they gonna win Oda? It is annoying that they did that, though. Are they gonna pop this for white? If they pop this for white, I mean, oh, pack leader? Okay. Three mana. Combat Celebrant. Okay, this doesn't have haste, right? No, this doesn't have haste. Okay, so part of me wants to fucking blow this bitch up. The Combat Celebrant is a little concerning, um, but not the end of the world. There's also part of me that wants to just kill this pack leader instead so that they don't get the fucking draw trigger. I am going to take a bunch off of the Storm Chaser, though. So, fuck. I think we... Yeah, we got to kill the Storm Chaser. Or do we kill the Shaman? Shaman gets them off of mana. They've only got one card in hand. And they have no way to cast Minota if they have it. Hmm. You know what, I think we take our five. Kill the Shaman so that they don't have a way to cast Winota next turn, if they have it. This might not even be Winota. I feel like it should be, though. We'll take our five. Oh, fuck. I'm an idiot. Yeah, we're dead. Fuck. I knew I should have hit that fucking thing. I forgot it gives the other thing haste, too. Fuck. Because now he's going to exert. That's nine. That's, yeah, fuck. God damn it. Okay, that's on me. That, I forgot this gives him haste also. I need a plus two, plus zero. I did not see the fucking give haste part because it was hidden on this bottom shit. Fuck. Okay. Uh, portable hole in. Whoa, fuck. Bring in portable holes, bring in fatal push. Um, Fable's going away. Basically the same thing, just kind of trim combo pieces. Like, I, again, I know why Fable is in this fucking deck, but it feels so bad. 90% of the time, I'm just chucking it to a blood token or to, like, the lava axe. I don't know. It is what it is. Do to do. Tis what it is. But oh well. 
how's everyone doing today? Y'all, y'all being pretty fucking quiet today. We'll be out of play. We will keep those. This actually doesn't seem that bad. We got early game removal. We got a way to chuck the Parhelion into the grave. We just need the reanimator. Just need a Grease Fang. But this is probably going to be a repeat of, like, fucking yesterday when I was doing this. Three matches in a row. Grease Fang was in the bottom 22 cards of my deck. In all three matches. All right, buddy. Is that what you want to do? Come on. Come on. I will say, I have been noticing that MTGO players have been playing a lot slower than they used to lately. Don't know why. Those also could just be fucking, like, Naya werewolves. Considering we didn't see Winota, I really don't know for sure. Problem is, is, like, everything that we saw kind of, like, said Winona. Uh, so we're gonna just fucking push this guy to get him the fuck out of the way. Cast. There we go. Get your mana dork out of the way. Uh, we're gonna play the Blood Crypt. Play Harvester. So we have a way to get the Parhelion in the grave. And then go from there. What are you doing, opponent? Did you tap your mana wrong? Are you trying? Oh no, he's just gonna stomp it. Okay. So maybe this is a Winota. I don't know. This might just be like some kind of fucking gruel aggro deck. I don't know. Grease Fang? No, Stitcher Supplier. Okay. Excuse me. So we're gonna go ahead to Stitcher Supplier. We got a Parhelion in the grave, so we have multiples now, which is nice. We also have a chump blocker, which is nice. Uh, we are going to cycle to get the Parhelion in the grave and hopefully draw into a Grease Fang so that we get two draws. So... Oh yeah, so I think this might just be like Naya aggro-y shit. Uh, we're going to go ahead and chuck the Parhelion. Of course we drew a land. Let me guess, land? There's no way it's going to be something useful. With, with our track record today, there's no way this card is going to be something useful at all. Oh, it has a nice... Oh my god, we drew a Grease Fang. Holy shit. Who would have fucking thought? Um, Since I'm not doing shit anyways, let's conserve our life total. I cannot believe we actually drew a fucking Grease Fang there. With how our luck has been today, that was a fucking miracle. Schwack you for a few. I will gladly trade my fucking citrus supplier with one of your elvish mystics. Not taking the bait? Okay, that's fine. This is what, 14 damage? Put you to four? I can do it again next turn? Okay, thank you, Bob. <laughs> that was a fucking miracle that we just top-decked fucking Grease Fang. That, that is better than I could have even hoped for at that point. So I think we just run it back. Being on the play of the draw, I really don't think matters in this matchup. So we'll see. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Do, 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 Let's see, let's see, let's see. Do, 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 do. Oh, 
Alright, opponent. Come on. Cyborg faster. Sideboard fucking faster. Motherfucker. Well then. Hopefully everyone's having a good Friday. Hope y'all are having fun. Looking forward to going and grabbing some Nilla Nectar later, assuming that they haven't fucking sold out yet. So that's gonna be fun. Hey, our opponent's back. Cool. Back and actually playing Magic. I think... I think my Amazon order just showed up. I think I just heard fucking Alexa doing her doo-doo-doo shit. Um... Fill the grave, redraw, redraw, but it's kind of fucking slow. Uh... We have no hate cards. We can turn one Stitcher, turn two Epicure, hopefully cycle something. Turn three Mirror Breaker? I, I think we keep this. It's a little slower than I would like, but it actually kind of has what we're looking for. So, I think we keep this. Alright, they don't have a turn one Mana Door, so that helps. Fatal Push is nice. Um... We are going to shock the shit out of ourselves, though, which is unfortunate. Well, at least we got three lands out of the way. <laughs> so that's something. Okay, so we're going to kill the pack leader. Depending on what we draw here, we're probably just going to kill the fucking pack leader. Okay, Lightning Axe is good. Um, again, it sucks we're shocking ourselves so much, but we're going to play this. We're going to see if they want to take the bait. If they want to block the Citrus Supplier, I'm actually a fucking k okay with that. And then we're going to see what they play before they go to combat. There is a possibility of getting blown out with a snakeskin veil, but we haven't seen any protection yet, so there's not really a huge reason to fucking play around it. He could, whatever it is, fucking... Oh yeah, so he's gonna Reckless Storm Chaser. So we're gonna let him target with Storm Chaser. I wouldn't be surprised if he targets the... Okay, he's gonna target itself? Um, in that case, then, we have ways to kill that. I think we're just going to kill the pack leader, because it's just plus one, plus one, an ace. Okay, yeah, we're, we're going to kill the pack leader. We have ways to kill the storm chaser later. We just don't want them drawing a card off of this, is mostly what it comes down to. I will chump with that to cure all fucking day. I don't care. That is a okay. We will chump with that to cure. So we got a Deadly Dispute, so there's something to be said about holding back Deadly Dispute to sack the Stitcher Supplier and draw some cards. Um, that also saves us some... I think that's actually what we want to do here, unfortunately. It also allows us to hold up the Lightning Axe if we need it to kill this fucking thing, even though we don't really have anything in hand that we want. So yeah, I don't know. I, I think we're going to just go ahead and play the... Deal with the Mirror Breaker, get another fucking Chump Blocker to get some additional mana. And this way we actually can, like, double Chump if we need to. To just kill the Storm Chaser this way. We can also sack the Blood Tide, the Blood Token to the Deadly Dispute if we need to. Okay, so we've got another fucking Pack Leader. So he's gonna get to draw a card off of this, which is annoying. Yep, yep, yep. So he's going to get to draw a card. The question is going to be, I think we want to double chump. Like, it sucks getting rid of mana, but we have more mana anyways. I think we're going to want to get rid of this fucker.
Uh, does he have a way to pump this that I'm just like missing? Does he actually have snakeskin veil? No. Okay. So he gets to draw a card. We. Oh, he didn't want the citrus party under the grave. Okay. Another pack leader. Okay. Okay, so that's a fable of the mirror breaker. I think we're just gonna chuck. Um. Yeah, we're gonna chuck these two. Okay, portable hole is good. Portable hole is very good. So we're gonna portable hole. Get rid of one of the pack leaders. Then we can deadly dispute, depending on what we draw. Pitch it to lava axe for the other one. So that actually was, those are actually pretty good draws. Or a pretty good draw, well, two, whatever, on a fable. For once, it's actually doing something relevant. <laughs> I am very much feeling the, my combo pieces are in the bottom half of my deck feeling here. Uh, so it's just playing a land or else. He's got two cards left in hand. So the nice part is, is I have two Deadly Disputes, two things I can get rid of for it. So I've got quite a few draws that I can use here. He's running low on cards. I haven't, other than Pack Leader, I have not seen anything in his deck that allows him to draw cards. So we are kind of running him out of shit. We did see a Zika's Chariot, which is a little concerning, but not the end of the world. So, the more I'm thinking about it, the less I think this is, either this is Winota with some really fucking weird draws, or this actually might just be, like, Naya aggro shit. So, we'll see. We will see, we will see, we will see. What's it mean? Three mana. This is another Storm Chaser that's kind of annoying. Because it does mean they're going to get to get a fucking hit in on us. But it's also not the end of the world if it is a Stormbreaker. Or Storm, whatever the fuck this thing is. I feel like with that mana, that's probably what it is. Pony is fucking tanking those shit. They are really thinking their life choices here. Okay, buddy. What the fuck are you doing? What are you doing, sir? Okay, undoing his undoing his life choices. Deciding to do other things. Okay. So this time just to get in with the werewolf back later, that's fine. Gonna block. We are going to Deadly Dispute. Still have not hit anything fucking relevant, which is annoying. Wow, and two lands off of that. The wow you. <laughs> wow. That. Okay. <sighs> like, I, I don't even know what to say to that. Like, 
Oops. Wow. We are very much in the entire combo is apparently on the bottom half of our deck here. Uh, apparently that's what's fucking going on. Good to fucking know. So I am going to, whatever they decide to attack with, I'm going to fucking deadly dispute. Sack one of these motherfuckers. Okay, so he does have a Reckless Storm Chaser. That's probably what he was debating about using last turn. Um, we're going to see what he does here. He's targeting itself. So... We're going to go ahead, cycle this, see what we hit first. Because if we hit a Fatal Push, that's not bad. If we hit something... Okay, so we hit a Grease Fang, which is actually decent. Um... Okay, so here's the shitty part, is I don't want him to attack, because it means he's going to get to draw a card. Um, okay, so we are going to Deadly Dispute. I'm going to sack that to cure. Hope we get something good to chuck to this Lightning Axe. Another Grease Fang. Okay. Um, so we are going to... Lightning Axe the Storm Chaser, chucking the land that we don't fucking need. Uh, we're probably just going to take the three from the pack leader, unfortunately, because we really don't want to lose this thing yet. We somehow still have not hit shit for vehicles. Something good? Thank God. Okay. So now we can fucking do things. Um, we are going to chuck the Parhel in. Draw Mana Crypt. We are going to Grease Fang. Okay. I'm 99% sure we fucking got there. We are going to crew this. We are going to move to combat. Gonna swack you for a bunch. We are going to copy. Oh, fuck. I'm an idiot. You have to sacrifice at the end of turn. I'm dumb. Shit happens. I needed to do that beforehand. It would have killed him. I'm dumb. It's fine. Shit happens. <laughs> but we got we got the blockers and we have lethal on board, so I don't I don't foresee anything going wrong here. I mean, famous last words, whatever. But we'll see. I'm an idiot. I had lethal. Again, new cards I'm not used to playing with. <laughs> And he gives up anyways. So, cool. We got that one. Our, our match win rate is slowly going up. We will play another one. See if we can get another opponent. Uh, okay, so this time our opponent's waiting for us. So, we got that. Got to see when our opponent decides they actually want to make our match. Okay. The Coda. Reminds me of my buddy's dog. His name is Coda. I doubt this guy is as friendly, but I don't know. We'll find out. All right, one the die roll. We're good, we're good, we're good. Zero lander. Can't keep that shit. We've already learned one landers are way too rare. Well, okay, so this one, normally I would say fucking no way on a one lander. But we got the red mana. We theoretically can make a token, cycle away this, and hopefully hit another land. So as shitty as this is, I think we're going to keep it. That is the thing that is farthest away from being cast. So 
Yell at me if you want, chat. I'm giving this a shot. Probably going to get severely punished for this. Oh boy, it's Lotus Field. <laughs> I'll get to see how our opponent wins the games when I can't fucking figure out how the hell to stack my triggers. Or make my fucking piles. Okay, so we did not get punished. That's actually... Well, I... We kinda did. Um, we want black mana. Which is a little annoying. So we're gonna see if we can cycle it. Uh, nope, that is not black mana. Okay, so maybe we are getting punished here, but... Uh, we're gonna see. Can't do anything this turn anyways. We are getting mildly punished, which is annoying. Here comes the Lotus Field. Oh, no. Shimmer possibility. Okay. So the one thing I will say about this deck is there are times where, like, you can set up the combo, but you don't actually have a way to finish it. Black mana. Please, black mana. <laughs> Every color but black. God damn. All right, guys, we, we are now getting mana screwed while drawing lands because apparently the magic gods are like, no, fuck you, asshole. We're not we're not fucking letting this happen. Uh, is he just going to buy that back with a alligator recovery? Yeah, he's just going to buy the shimmer back, which means he's kind of screwed on what he's doing. Oh, OK, never mind. He's just set up the combo. Okay, so he has a setup where he theoretically could go off next turn. The nice part is, is they can get this set up. And then still have nothing to do. Black mana, please. Black mana! Yes. We're kind of just hoping we mill over a Grease Fang now. We did not. We did mill over a fuckload of lands, though. So we're kind of just hoping they don't have it here. It's basically the gist of it. Like I said, the nice part is, is like, they can get this set up and then not have a way to actually finish the game. I, I've done that multiple times. I'm like, oh, I have all the fucking mana in the world, and then I can't actually find a way to finish the game. Okay, so next turn, they probably fucking have it. So we need to find a way to end this game right the fuck now. That is not a grease thing. Um, uh, we, unfortunately, are going to Deadly Dispute. Grease Fang? Please? Kroxa? Not the worst thing in the world. <laughs> Add another fucking Port Hellion. Because why not? Um, so we could actually Kroxa next turn. Um, we could can't stay away Kroxa now to try to fuck up their hand, but... It's risky. Problem is, is when it dies, it gets exiled. So I actually think we want to do this as much as this sucks getting rid of our black mana. So that we can chuck this Parhelion and hopefully hit more black mana. Because we played our fucking card this turn, right? Yeah, we played an Inspiring Advantage. So as much as this sucks, we're kind of just going to go with this. Just hope they don't have it. Like I said, there, there's multiple times I've had this set up where I just literally don't have the win. I just have all the fucking mana in the world and no way to finish the game. But we're, we're gonna we're gonna let them do their thing. They have all the mana in the world. If they have a way to finish it, they have a way to finish it. If not, oh well. They're just gonna hard cast a fucking Okay. I was gonna say they're just gonna hard cast a fucking uh omniscience. All right, so he's just cycling through his deck. He has basically infinite mana at this point. What is this? That fucking uh, visions? That, no, dark petition. Searching for something. So he's probably searching for the ultimatum now. Either that or a omniscience. 
So we'll let, we'll let this guy do his thing. We'll, we'll let him jack off a little bit. It's fine. Oh, he was searching for the ultimatum. Okay, so now we have to make a decision here. So it's probably going to be Omniscience, whatever the fuck that, like, search your library for three cards thing is. We'll finally get to see what the fucking pile that actually wins you the game is. Behold the Beyond, Hidden Strings, Omniscience. We'll put the Searcher back into their library to shuffle away. So he's going to get to cast Omniscience, he's going to get to cast Hidden Strings, which at this point, if he gets Omniscience, the Hidden Strings is completely fucking irrelevant anyways. So we'll see if he has what he needs to finish the game off here, in hand already. Peer into the Abyss to draw half of his library. So he's probably got it? I don't know why the fuck he's playing lands. Like, at this point his lands are completely irrelevant. So I'm not super sure what the fuck the point of that was. Like, you can literally cast whatever you want for free. Why, why are you playing lands? Okay, so now he's going to go get Approach of the Second Son. He's going to cast Approach of the Second Son. Does he have the tutor to go find it? Or is he just going to have to start fucking searching through his library? Okay, so there's the second one. That, that's how you fucking get it. Yep, that's fine. Yep, 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 yep. Okay. So apparently that's the winning pile that you need, which, again, I've never actually watched anyone fucking play this, so whatever. Um, we are going to bring in all of the goddamn hand disruption. Get rid of all of the removal. Um, and then kind of just start trimming shit. Probably just do the same kind of trimming that we do anyways. Something like that. Yeah, let's try that. We're gonna give that a shot. Oh boy. So luckily we got a bunch of shit to bring in in games two and three, so. Uh, double go blank seems pretty fucking decent to me. Well, shit. <laughs> Did not know they played Leyline of Sanctity. That's annoying. We literally don't have a way to deal with this card. So we just gotta hope that we can combo faster than them. Is literally all we can do here. Does not help when all we are milling is lands. Okay. Well, this might not go well. <laughs> yeah. This list I was playing did not have Leyline in it. Yep, get your Lotus Petal, or your Lotus Field, whatever the fuck it's called. The Seiju? Interesting. I guess he's grabbing that to blow up a Parhelion? I mean, I guess he also could have it to blow up a Damping Spear, but it at least takes a turn off. We're going to attack first. Him having the Besaju in hand is kind of annoying, but it also forces him to spend a turn fucking trying to take out a Damping Spear. Yeah, Sphere. So it honestly might be worth it. Yeah, I'm just gonna fucking play it. This forces him to take a turn off to kill it. So... I mean, these go blanks are fucking useless anyways, so we're gonna fucking chuck one to draw a card. 
the land into probably another land because why not if our opponent would stop with their fucking upkeep draw or upkeep stop okay another citrus supplier is terrible what do we mill over anything useful no again absolutely nothing useful Well, just start swacking him down and hope that he's fucking taking time off to do shit. So, the chances are, is what's going to happen here is end of turn, he's going to besage you away the Damping Sphere. Which is going to be annoying. So, I think what I want to do is play the white side of this, loot away, hope I hit another Damping Sphere so that I have my second one. So, we're going to do this. Damping Sphere Part 2? No, Stitcher Supplier. So, I mean, fuck it. We're just going to run it out. At this point, there's no reason not to. Anything relevant. Still absolutely nothing relevant. Okay. So, apparently, that's how today's going to go. Ugh. Yep. So, they're going to blow that up. Yeah, we'll grab a land. That's fine. We will grab a Godless Shrine tapped they are going to tap these play a lotus field copies that's being staged to set up for next turn is basically what's going to happen here yep so they're going to tap that play lotus field yep they're going to use this mana use that's being staged to copy lotus field so they can set up to combo off next turn copy lotus field so the absolute best top deck we have here is if we were to top deck um, Damping Sphere. Because then it just shuts them off of doing what they want to do. Come on, Damping Sphere. Stitcher Supplier. God fucking damn it. Still absolutely nothing useful. <laughs> God damn. Okay, so the RNG gods are not in our favor here. I mean, the nice part is, is they literally have to combo this turn or drop some kind of fucking uh, blocker, like a fucking grazer or something. I mean, there, there's nothing we can do here. So if you got it, you got it. The, the RNG gods are not in our favor today. So, I mean, we just got to hope that they don't have a way to finish the combo and they're just going to spin, uh, fucking spin their gears here. That's base. Okay. You have all the fucking mana in the world. Have fun. Like I said, we basically just have to hope they don't actually have a way to finish the game here. What is this? Pure? No. Dark? No. The Behold the Beyond thing about Bobber? Discard your hand. Get three cards. This will probably win in the game. But we'll see. We'll see what actually happens here. Unfortunately, we're what? 26 cards into our deck and literally hit nothing relevant. The new goblin? Which new goblin? I will be completely honest. I have not kept up with spoilers or any of the new standard stuff for the most part. Um, so which, which new goblin? <laughs> very nice, very nice. Goblin D's nuts. I like it. I like it a lot. <laughs> you, you got me, buddy. You got me. Good job. Oh, fuck. Okay, so... Probably gonna be the same pile as last time, which is just lets them fucking win. Alright, so... Peer into the Abyss on missions. Um... We're going to throw the omniscience back and kind of just hope that they can't get it. But they're probably just going to get their whole fucking thing back. So it is what it is. We'll give them the opportunity to fuck this up somehow. Because if they manage to fuck it up, we win. But the chances of them fucking it up are slim to none. So we'll see what happens.
So why do we F6 through the turn? Yep, yep, yep. Do your thing, buddy. So like I said, there there always is a possibility they find some way to fuck this up, which is why I don't want to just concede. Because there is a possibility they mess this up somehow. I gotta stay here for 20 minutes while they fucking do it. <laughs> oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Okay, are you getting your damn uh, fave wishes yet, is the question. Because if they get the fave wishes, then I will concede. Okay, plays omniscience. Masterminds acquisition. Okay, there's the first one of the fucking approach to the second sons. Show me. Dig through time. Look at the. Okay, cool. You got it, buddy. You got it. Good job. Good job, buddy. On to the next one. Okay, we will see. Uh, we're up against Jackie for Inf. Whatever the fuck that means. That's, a, that, that's the guy we're supposed to be playing against. What the fuck? <laughs> okay, apparently he'd rather play someone else. Uh, okay, he, he exited out of it. There we go. All right, buddy. Y you figured it out. Oh, uh, that was funny. All right, we're on the play. Let's see. These motherfucking one-landers. We got a mulligan. We already learned. We cannot keep the one-landers. Okay, we can keep this. This is actually good. Uh, we're going to put this fucking shitty-ass pathway to the bottom. I really do not like these things as dual lands. I really don't. I am 100% on the same boat as fucking Saffron Olive on that one. Do not like those as dual lands whatsoever. All right. Mill something relevant, damn it. Nothing. Okay. Not milling anything remotely relevant. No keto key. So green white something. Another shitty land that doesn't fucking matter. Um I'm just gonna go ahead and play this so that we know that it comes in untapped. We're gonna attack, swack you for one. Probably gonna fatal push this little fucker so that we can get some more shit in the graveyard and hopefully mill over our combo piece. Unless they present something we need to deal with. Naya makes me think Winota. Thalia. Yeah. We're gonna get this out of the way now. Please mill over something relevant. Okay, there's the Parhelion. So we should be fucking good now. Uh, we're going to play this on, we got plenty of white. We can get black or red, so it's honestly kind of irrelevant. Um, black, white, whatever. Get a Grease Fang. And they scoop it up. Okay. Um, so I'm assuming this is Winota. 
Does does Winota play fucking Thalia? I honestly don't fucking know. Um, Naya Winota, do you play Thalia's? Um, not in a normal list, they don't. Is there just like a Naya humans list or some shit? Like... Or is this just like some dude's fucking brew? Um... Five color humans, maybe? Oh, maybe that's what we were up against before, was like some weird-ass version of five color humans. And they just didn't hit their Mantis Riders or some shit. Anyways, we're gonna grab that. We're All we saw was a fucking human, so we're gonna go ahead and bring in all of our removal. Um... Broxus seems meh. Fable seems meh. I mean, I guess kind of just turn some combo pieces and go from there and see what fucking happens. I'm assuming this is this five color humans list I'm looking at, but I don't know for sure, but we're gonna fucking figure it out. Okay. Our opponent is back. Oh, is that so, girl? Here he is quite indignant about this whole thing. Um, so this has everything we want, but absolutely no fucking lands, so we cannot keep this. Uh, again, not enough lands to justify keeping. Okay, so we can keep this. Um, I think we want to put Harvester to the bottom. Let's put one of the Inspiring Vantages to the bottom. So we'll play this on Black, Stitcher, Supplier, then we can play this and then Deadly Dispute it away to hopefully get a Parhelion in the grave. Because this is theoretically a turn 3 Parhelion. I mean, that's a Parhelion, but not the way that we want it. <laughs> so now we need some way to chuck it, or we need to mill over one. Okay, those are not Parhelions. So now we need a way to get this in the fucking graveyard. Or we need to mill over it with our Deadly Dispute. If they turn... Okay, so they're not going to turn to Thalia, which is good for us. Yeah, another Inspiring Vantage. We'll, we'll get in for some damage. Like, we don't have to do this right now, so we'll just get in for damage and we'll Deadly Dispute at the end of their turn. Depending on what they do. And either hope we find a way to chuck this Parhel in. Or that we just mill over one of them. Storm Chaser? Elite Spellbinder. Okay. Um, a little annoying, but... Okay, so we don't hit anything, so we still need to find a way to fucking... Okay, can't stay away is not terrible. We still need to find a way to chuck this Parhelion, though. Um, they might just take the Parhelion so that we can't chuck it, which is a little annoying, but again, not the end of the world. Because we can can't stay away to get back the Stitcher Supplier to mill some more shit. They also might just take the Grease Fang. I feel like the correct move is take the part alien so that I cannot discard it. No, they take the Grease Fang. Okay. I'm actually getting to the point where I can just cast it anyway, so I'm not 100% sure why they did that. It would help if we didn't just keep drawing fucking lands, though. Uh, Stitcher, so, whoops. We're going to can't stay away the... We're actually going to can't stay away the Bloodline guy. Because this allows us to chuck the part alien now. And we have the Mana to Grease Fang next turn. So if he tries to disrupt our hand, we can go ahead and just fucking pitch this. We have the Mana for Grease Fang next turn, so we should be able to just pop our combo off, depending on if they leave Mana up or not. So we're going to get in. This could be Coco Mana, which is mildly annoying. 
It's just that, okay, so they're probably leaving up Coco Mana, which is a little annoying, but not the end of the world. Either that, or they might have some form of removal on the Grease Fang. Um, hmm. So there's something to be said about just saying fuck it and going for it, but I think we're going to wait a turn. Because we have a second part Hellion we can chuck. And this gives us a chance to possibly draw another Grease Fang and draw some kind of hate for this bullshit. This also allows us to chip in for a little bit more damage, so if we go for it, it should theoretically be lethal. So apparently they didn't have Coco. Either that or they just didn't want to fucking play it. What are we playing? Four mana? Okay, so this... You're just running out of Winota with nothing to trigger it. I mean, that's interesting. So that basically just means we fucking go for it. Like... Okay. <laughs> I'm a little confused, but okay. Um, so this doesn't hit anything. We're just going to shock this in. And we're going to play the Grease Fang, I guess. I don't know if there's any one mana three damage thing he can do here. Grab a Parhelion. Okay, I can still crew it with everything else I have on board. So I'm not sure what this actually does for them. I mean, I guess it gets it so that I can't do this again next turn. But unless he gets something with haste, he still can't trigger his Winota. So he blocks the Parhelion, takes eight. Parhelion gets bounced back to hand, which is fine. I can also just hard cast a fucking Sky Sovereign next turn, which, what, it takes three to crew? So this can crew the Sky Sovereign if I need it to? So there's an Elvish Mystic, which I'm just going to blow up. I mean, if he's got the werewolf thing, I guess we have a problem. Is he just going to attack with Winota? He's just attacking with Winota. I mean, I just take it. It's not triggering itself. I'll let Winota live because he's dead on the fucking crackback. Not sure what he's got going on here that he thinks can get him out of this, unless there's something I'm missing. Oh, he doesn't! Okay, cool. Well, we got there. And on that note, I think I'm going to call it a night. Um, yeah. I mean, clearly it was not our day for Bomberman. Um, if you go back and watch the YouTube, you can see that uh, clearly our deck did not want to cooperate. But, I mean, that's sometimes what it is. The RNG gods do what they do. Um, but before I get out of here, I'm going to ship you all off to uh, Gabe Nassif. Looks like he's doing something today. I don't know what. Let's see. Uh, looks like Tashi Tamishi combo? If his little thumbnail is actually accurate here. So y'all can have some fun with some modern Tamishi combo. If you haven't already, follow me on all the social media there. Uh, know when I'm streaming. Keep up with the dumb shit I do. Catch this stream and all of the previous ones over on the YouTube channel. And if you ever have any deck lists or any fun decks you want to see, as long as they're 850 or less, uh, throw them up on the Discord there. I will give them a shot. But anyways, I'm going to send you guys off to Nassif. Hopefully he's having better luck than I am today. And I will uh, catch you all next time. Later.